Yeah, I'm back with video 13, dealing with human heredity. Uh, now, human heredity is really interesting to me. First of all, scientists use karyotypes to determine what chromosomes you have. Now, I actually have my wife's karyotype, so you'll be able to see that more in class. But a karyotype is basically a picture of your chromosomes. And what scientists do is they take, or doctors for that matter, take uh, a cell in your body, usually a blood cell, and they take a picture of your chromosomes and they pair them up. And if you'll notice down here on this chart of the karyotype, there are two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, two number fours, two number fives, all the way down until you got two number 22s, two number 21s. Now if you'll notice here, here's an X and here's a Y. Here's the Y and this X. This is actually a boy, okay? This is actually a boy. But if you counted up all these chromosomes, there's 46 is what we would expect, and there's 23 pairs. 23 times 2 makes 46, okay? Now, here's a, a karyotype of a female with Pitot syndrome. She actually has 47 chromosomes. If you'll notice over here, she has 1, 2, 3, number 13 chromosomes. You should only get two. You should only have one from your mom, one from your dad. Well, this person has three number 13 chromosomes, so they end up with 47. Usually, if you have too much information, you can survive, but if the person has too little information, let's say they have only 45 chromosomes, usually they don't survive. But if you'll notice, there's still two number ones, still number twos, all the way down. So they got three number 13s, and you can also tell if you look down here at the bottom, she has two X chromosomes, so that means she's a female. All right, the next one here, this is Down syndrome, probably the most classic case you know, if they were going to ask you a question on the EOC, they would ask you about Down syndrome. You know, this is the one that most people hit on. It's caused by non-disjunction. Remember I talked about that uh, in the last chapter? Non-disjunction, when they don't split properly. Anytime you see too many chromosomes. This person has three number 21 chromosomes, and it is a girl. So it's a girl with Down syndrome. It's also called... Uh, Down syndrome is sometimes called trisomy 21, trisomy men 3, so they have 3 number 21 chromosomes. All right, now when we look at human chromosomes, just kind of refresher, a typical human cell has 46 chromosomes, I hope you know that. Now the first 22 pairs of chromosomes are called autosomes, make sure you know that for the test. Okay, the first 22 pairs have are called autosomes. The 23rd pair is the sex chromosome. Now, if you have XX, you're a female. XY, you're a male. So this is a good time to go over this. Who determines the sex of a child? Well, if a mama only has an X, she's going to give every child, no matter if it's a boy or a girl, an X. That's all she has to give. The daddy, on the other hand, has an X or a Y. So if he gives a Y, it's a boy. If he gives an X, it's a girl. So the daddy determines the sex of the child. So you know the classic story about Henry VIII killing his wives because they didn't give him a boy. They didn't have anything to do with it, actually, if you think about it. All right, I wanted to give you a picture of what a chromosome actually looks like. You can see how much bigger the X is than the Y. Since the X is a lot bigger than the Y chromosome, the X contains a little bit more genes than the, chromosome, than the Y chromosome. And when we talk about sex-linked traits within biology, we'll usually talk about recessive disorders on the X chromosome. So... Traits that males have a lot of times come from their mom because their mom's the one that gives them the eggs. All right, so can you look up here and tell me if this is a boy or a girl? You're going to have to do this on the test, and you will look right down here at the bottom. It has one long one and one short one. That means it's a boy. How many chromosomes do they have? You could go through and count them, but I can look, and they've got, um, they've got equal numbers, so they've got 46 chromosomes. All right, let's look at these here. Which one, A, B, C, or D, which one would be a normal, I mean, classic, I mean, normal as we, we can tell by the karyotype anyway, a normal female? Give you a few minutes to look. Hopefully, you said normal female. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right, and I know that because I look down here, she's got two long chromosomes. That means she has two X's and she has... 46 chromosomes, okay? Which one up here is the normal man? Normal is a relative term. I hope you said the normal man or the normal male. 
was A, and I can tell that because it has one long and one short, which is X and a Y, and it has 46 chromosomes. So at least B and D. Which one of these has 47 chromosomes? Hope you chose D. D has 47 chromosomes. Is it a boy or a girl? If you look down here, it is a boy. And it's actually a boy with Down syndrome or trisomy 21. So at least B. How many chromosomes does B have? B has only 45 chromosomes. If you notice, they only have one sex chromosome. This is actually a girl with Turner syndrome, and we would write her carry as XO. Like this boy is XY, this one is XX, this one is XY. She would be XO because she has only one X. Now, Turner syndrome female is one of those rare occasions where you have too few chromosomes, but you still uh, make it and you're alive. Uh, a Turner syndrome female would know that she would never go through a menstruation cycle. She would be infertile. Um, she's usually flat-chested. Um, that doesn't mean every flat-chested girl has Turner's, but um, she's normally flat-chested, and she, she doesn't develop all the female characteristics. It's because she doesn't have any ovaries because she has only one X chromosome. But that would be an example of Turner syndrome. All right, now let's go right into pedigrees here. And, and tomorrow you're going to probably do a, a pedigree for me in class. But um, human traits can be studied by pedigrees. Now I had a girl one time say, uh, ask a question what a pedigree was on the test, and she said it's a type of dog food. Even though that's true, if you put it out on the test, it's going to be wrong. A pedigree is actually a graphic representation of a family tree. And in a pedigree, Males are represented by squares, and females are represented by circles. Okay? Now, let me give it, go through a few examples. As you can see here, Fred and Norma, they married. Uh, That's a man and a woman. They married. They had two children. They had Karen. They had Karen, which is a girl, and they had Bob. That's their two children. I can tell because when you come here, they branch directly off from Fred and Norma's line. Now, Steve married Karen. And they had three children, all girls. Bob married Ann, and they had two children. So this gives you kind of an idea of what a Punnett square looks like. I mean, not a Punnett square, a pedigree looks like. Now, this is a pedigree they might give you on the EOC. If you'll notice here, first thing that strikes me is who's affected by this disease that we're talking about, we're tracking. Only the males are affected. If you ever see that on a test or anything, that means it is sex-linked. It means it's found on the X chromosome. It's found on the X chromosome. Because a boy is XY. If he gets a bad X, then he has it. A girl, on the other hand, has two Xs. So if they get one bad X, they can cover it up. It's called a carrier. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But this shows you um, how we can track a disease through by use of a pedigree. Now, this one's even more complicated. I can ask you questions like individual one, what relationship are they to individual three? Of course, that's daughter and father. What about one and four? One and four, these guys right here. One and four. So if that's his daughter, that's his grandson. So this is great-grandson and great-grandfather. What about eight and nine? This is mother-in-law and daughter-in-law because she married into the family. But you can see, now this one is not sex-linked trait, and I can tell that because there are some females colored in as well as males. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to cover today is, is on AB blood types. Uh, there's four, or ABO blood types, there's four blood types, A, B, AB, and O. Um, and it basically... If you look at the chart, a person with A blood can be two ways. They can either be homozygous, which we would write homozygous like capital IA, capital IA, or they can be heterozygous, capital IA, little i. Now, if you have A blood, you have what's called A antigens on your blood cell. So your body recognizes, if you have A blood, your body recognizes A blood cells as being its, their own. Um, now, used to, if you went, you know, like the Civil War, a lot of people died because they gave them wrong blood transfusion. If I have A blood and you give me B blood, 
then my body will recognize the bee blood as being a foreign invader and will attack it and coagulate it, which means make it clot. So it actually could cause death. So nowadays we, you know, we don't guess anymore, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. If you look up here at the chart, you know, A has A antigens, B has B antigens, AB has both, and O has none. Well, if you're given O blood, no matter what type of blood you have, it doesn't cause your blood to clot because it doesn't have any antigen, your body doesn't recognize it. So if you were to go to the hospital today in an accident and they didn't know what blood type you were, they'd give you O until they could type your blood because they know that it wouldn't kill you. Uh, once they figured out what you were, they would give you appropriate blood type. But anyway, let's go back to this. B blood, which is next right here, B blood has B antigens, and B blood, homozygous would be capital IB, capital IB, heterozygous would be capital IB, little i. A B blood has... A B blood has both A and B antigens on it, and there's only one way to get it, to get uh, A from one parent and a B from the other, and O, there's only one way to get it, is to get two little I's from each parent. Now, one last thing. O, since it can give blood to everybody, it is called the universal donor. And A, B blood, if you think about it, they can get it from O, they can get it from B because they have B antigens. They can get it from a person with A because they have A antigens. They're called a universal acceptor. So if you have AB blood, you can get it from anybody. But think about this. You can only give it to people that have AB because if you give it to a person with A, the B blood's reckon the B part of it's recognized as foreign. If you give it a person with B, the A's being recognized as foreign. If you give it a person with O, O can't get blood from anybody but O because it had antigens on it, it recognized as be foreign. So that's the AB blood. Now let's go through a few questions <coughs> real quick with the AB blood. Um, question would be, can a person with AB blood and one with B blood have a child with B blood? Now what I would do is I would do a Punnett square. But let's look first, look at the genotypes. A person with AB blood would be here. A person with B blood, I don't tell you if it's homozygous or heterozygous. So if I don't tell you, always use the heterozygous individual. And what we would do, we would do a four square, punt square, put one parent on one side, one parent on the other side, and just simply do the punt square. That, so they can have a child with AB, they can have a child with B, they can have another child with B, and then have a child with A. So can they have a child with B? Absolutely. It actually would be two out of four or 50% of the time these two parents would have a child with B. Still another one. Can a person with B blood and a person with A blood have a child with A blood? Well, B blood, remember, if I didn't tell you what it was, used to heterozygous. And a person with A blood used to heterozygous. So let's cross them. Do a punnett square. All right. Simple four square punnett square. They can have a child with AB. They can have a child with B. They can have a child with O, and they can have a child with A. So can they have a child with A? Absolutely, right here, which would be one out of four or 25% chance. Actually, these two parents can have every blood type there is. All right, let's do one more. Can a person with O and a one with AB have a child with O? All right, so O blood would be little I, little I. AB would be capital IA, capital IB. I hope you can even look at this and tell. But if we did our punnett square, all right, put O on one side, AB on the other side, they would have a child with A, a child with A, a child with B, and a child with B. So can they have? Absolutely not. Now, this is a classic kind of question that they'll ask you on the EOC, so make sure you remember the blood type. They won't give them to you. All right, so just once again, real quickly, what the blood types were. A, there's two ways to have blood type. You can be homozygous or you can be heterozygous. B, there's two ways. Homozygous, heterozygous. A, B, there's only one way you can get it. And O, there's only one way you can get it. You need to remember these. They will not give them to you on the test. All right, guys, I hope this helps. And that's video 14.